All right, we transition right over to the 5,000 meter final. 24 athletes. There's the collegiate record by Henry Rono. Lowy LeLang has the meet record. And there's King Chez. He already won his third 10,000 meter title two years ago and is seeking his second double, 10 in the five. He didn't win, run the five as a freshman for some reason. If he wins this race, it'll become his 15th NCAA title that will tie Suleiman Nuyambui, and he still has a year of eligibility left. Imagine a ball starting at 5,000. It's possible. Let's quickly update the standings after 16 events. Arkansas, you can see there with a 10-point lead over Florida. Florida had a disqualification in the 400 meters of Najee Glass, so that knocked their total down three points. Oregon in third. Here are the competitors to watch. We have 24 in total. They qualified through regional competition. The West Regional was at uh, KU in Lawrence, Kansas, under lousy conditions weather-wise. 12 came from the West Regional. 12 came from the East Regional in Jacksonville, Florida. Those regionals were two weeks ago. This is all 24 athletes in this race, and there were all 24 in the 10,000 meters just to kind of combine them. The field stretch out, and it saves time to get the meet moving along. This is a pretty solid pace just looking at the leg turnover here. Chez settles right into second place. If there's ever a chance in this meet, I mean the 10,000 I thought was going to be easy for him, but the talent level here is higher in the 5,000 meters based on what guys have done earlier this season. There's a number of athletes in here that have run in the 1320s for a 5,000 meter. That's really superb, and that could be anywhere from a 419 mile to 4 minutes and 21 seconds per mile for 3.1 miles. Thomas Curtin of Virginia Tech, the senior, is leading over Edward Cheserick, and Sean McGordy of Stanford tucked into third. Justin Knight of Syracuse is there. Morgan McDonald of Wisconsin as they sort of shake themselves out here. Pretty good pace, you can see, because of the way that the group has strung itself out. Plenty of room for all the athletes to run. Dwight uh, Curtin likes to push things. The man from VTech in the front, he tends to be an alpha person out there. First, second, or third in most every race he's in. And he's keeping this pace honest. I think their best chance to defeat Cesarek by a number of these guys who have run 13, 33 or faster, and there are a number of them we'll touch on, um, and including this man right here, Kurt, is to have a hard pace. We all know Chess can kick, but he, let's, let's get into something here. Coach Robert Johnson doesn't want to talk about this. When he meets with the press, he doesn't talk about it. The Eugene Register Guard did a story earlier this week saying that Cesarek spoke once at an, at an event saying, yes, I've had issues. I sat with the coaches and said, how do I get healthy? He had a calf injury. He had another a leg injury as well, and he's been recovering from that. It was a hamstring injury. And he got defeated, actually lost a race earlier this outdoor season. But the training has gone well in the last month plus, and he certainly has regained form. But the question is, what type of shape is he really in here? And will a fast pace at 5,000 meters take its toll on him after a 10K from two days ago? Patrick Tiernan of Villanova has uh, now taken over the lead from Thomas Curtin. There's been a little adjustment in the team standings after 19 events now. Arkansas with just a two-point lead over Florida with just this event and the 4 by 400 meter relay remaining. You can see that all the field events they are folding up their tents and their chairs. So the only thing left in these men's finals championships is this 5,000 meter race and the 4 by 400 meter relays. And we'll be able to let you know which of the contending teams have teams in that final event. So Tiernan now leading Cesarek. And I think it's significant that Cesarek is a you know, little bit of a nick. He didn't have to really do much in the 10,000 meters, but as you mentioned, this pace is pretty solid, much more so than the 10,000 was. And there's some guys in here who can sprint if he were to get in a little bit of trouble, get boxed, um, have a, the pace be a little bit harder, make him work a little bit harder. There might be a chance that uh, we could have an upset here. Patrick Tiernan from Australia, big and tall, a very accomplished runner, came here to head coach Marcus O'Sullivan to join Villanova and run well. Um, and has done it. And at the NCAA Cross Country Championships, 
for much of the race, that's exactly what it looked like. Tiernan out in the lead, pushing the pace. Cesarek tucking in, holding on, and they separated from the entire NCAA cross-country field. And Chaz, uh, Chaz, within the last mile, decided it's time and pulled away and won easily. But is he in the shape now that he was in back then? We don't know. They're coming up with about nine laps remaining, and we see them strung out nicely. We are going to step aside, take a little break here, and when we come back, more coverage of this men's 5,000 meters here at the NCAA Championships. For more of our coverage of the 2016 NCAA Track and Field Championships presented by Northwestern in the middle of the 5,000 meters with about five and a half laps remaining. Let's take a, take a look at another Enterprise pick us up moment, pick you up moment. The 200 meters, Jerry and Lawson making history. He had won the long jump on Wednesday, won the 100 meters earlier today, and here in the 200, he holds off Christian Coleman and equals Jesse Owens' record of winning three individual titles at the NCAA championships. It's just that Owens did it in 1935 and 1936. Five laps remaining as we update the standings with just two events left on the program. Arkansas with a two-point lead over Florida. Florida, the only one of the teams in contention with a team in the 4x400 relay. Got to remember that. That's significant. If they don't drop the baton, if they finish seventh or better, then they've got a good chance for the title. So we'll see. And Arkansas doesn't have anybody in the 5,000 meters. Very rare because they have a distance running powerhouse. The pace out here, somewhere around 13 minutes and 50 seconds, I think it will pick up some. But in my opinion, they're playing into the hands of Edward Cesarek. This pace is maybe not fast enough to shake them. And guys have run faster. Some of the talent in here, including Sean McGordy, they did not run the 10,000 meters, so they're fresh for this race. And that has been my question all along. Why not do something? that would upset the way Chez expects everybody to run. 
do something to change things so that Cesarek is challenged. Sean McGordy's in third place. Justin Knight from Syracuse is in fourth place. And Tiernan continues to be the workhorse up front. I mean, Cesarek to me looks just about as comfortable as he always does. I don't, you know, I don't know what to make of it. I'm a little surprised uh, if it is 13.50, 13.47. Justin Knight back there has run 13 minutes and 27 seconds for the 5K this year. Uh, just as an example, Curtin himself is the ACC 5 and 10,000 meter champion uh, and has run 13.33. Thomas Awad, the Ivy League champion, 13.33. So, it's a little slow. And the wind is now negligible. The American flag hanging straight down. The flag's on the far turn, really not doing a whole lot. So that is no longer an issue as it was earlier as they come back up with three laps remaining. Now McGordy's got excellent speed. The man in third place uh, ran under three minutes and 54 seconds on Seattle's oversized track at the University of Washington indoors this year. He has had a terrific couple of years at Stanford University. And as far as I know, is, is fit and fresh. And let's see what happens here. I don't, you know, it's very hard to seemingly beat Chez on a last lap kick. So it's Patrick Tiernan of Villanova leading over Cesarek, who's now looking like he wants to take the lead. He passes and drops in, so Chez is now in the lead, and McGordy goes right with him. Tiernan back to third, then Justin Knight of Syracuse, and Patrick Corona of the Air Force. Of course, they train and live at altitude up there in Colorado Springs. He's right there as well. Ryan Walling of Ole Miss is also in the mix. There's a lot of athletes suddenly in the mix right there. All scorers, eight in that group up front. Coming up to two laps to go, and the crowd really into it. A lot of jostling going on as they jockey for position. Two laps remaining. Cesarek now noticeably trying to slow things down a bit, and they're just letting him do it. Well, the pace is a little quicker on the last three or four laps, and now, to your point, Dwight, it's, it's slowed down. Although I'm watching leg turnover. There's McCordy starting to press. And Cesarek, let's see if he lets him take the lead. 11 minutes, 25 seconds with two laps to go. Let's see what the last 800 meters of this 5K is run in. Four guys out there look like they're going with him. So McGordy says, okay, none of that slowing down stuff. I know how that works. So it's McGordy, Cesarek, Tiernan, Knight, and McDonald. Knight is a 356 metric miler himself so guys who have speed are up there it's going to make it interesting see if they put a charge in here they, they're pushing it much more now look at Tiernan kind of hang with him here comes the bell it is McGordy, Cesarek and Tiernan who have now separated themselves from the other scorers that was a 63 second penultimate lap so the pace is quick and let's see McGordy's trying to hammer now look at Tiernan look at Tiernan move up Cesarek's gonna run himself right out of that little box that was about to be created for him and the crowd comes alive a little more than 200 meters remaining McGordy will not be dropped it's Cesarek Sean McGordy of Stanford and Patrick Tiernan of Villanova and Cesarek has not shaken McGordy there's a little separation now. Cesarek looks back again and again. And that's it. It's over. The double is complete. NCAA title number 15. He ties for the all-time record and still has a year of athletic eligibility left here at Oregon. Sean McGordy finishing second. Patrick Tiernan third. With a two-minute last 800 meters, the guys can't catch. Edward Chesra, King Ches reigns again with two NCAA titles outdoors his junior year. Guys gave him a real run for the money though down there. That's closer than it normally is, has been for virtually any of his individual titles. Five runners under 1330. It was an honest race, but they just cannot figure it out. Tiernan to his credit, not a big kicker, but he had something left. Chez made his move and McGordy held on. 
McGordy, a 404 high school miler, had a great career in Chantilly, Virginia. 57.07 for his last 400 meters. And in the 10K, that's exactly what Cesarek ran for his last lap, 57 seconds. Look at him glance around, he always does this. Peak, 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 am I okay? That works out to about a 4.19.5 mile for 3.1 miles for Cesarek and McGordy and Tiernan right behind. Let me correct myself, it was the 10 he didn't run his fresh mirror. This is his third 5,000 meter title. Listen to the people he joins with that. Jerry Lindgren, Steve Prefontaine, Suleiman Niambui, Edward Cesarek wins the double once again, his 15th NCAA title over Sean McGordy, Patrick Tiernan in third, Thomas Curtin comes back for fourth, five runners under 13.30, an outstanding race in an outstanding place for distance running, and once again, the winner is downstairs with Jill. I just told him I couldn't do that if I had roller skates on. 10,000, 5,000 inside of 48 hours, what is your recipe for success? You know, it is tough, like, you know, I came here today and, uh, you know, I keep it I keep it all out that I have to track today. Like the way we talked to my coach, they were like, you know, just go there, have fun. You know, this home. Yeah. You know, enjoy the crowd. It's gonna be there, and then to support you, just do whatever you can. Well, your crowd's waiting. Congratulations. Thank you.